this morning. I know we kind of got a mouthful already, praise the Lord. And so I know I realize that we're shorter on time, um, but we're going to just, uh, we're going to kind of wrap up slash uh, set up what would be a continuation of a series that we've been in called Discerning the Crowds. And I think now more than ever before, uh, there are lots of voices out there, and depending on uh, how you find yourself, or uh, you, you, there, there's pe- so many people are saying different things. And what you'll hear, uh, you'll hear a lot of conversations where you would say, what do you think? What do you think about this? What do you think about COVID? What do you think about this? What do you think? What do you think? And that's just wearing. Um, and, and not only is it wearing, uh, it's, it's a way that's down here. Really, at the end of the day, we need to be finding out what he thinks. And, and so there's a lot of noise, and there's a crowd going on, and you can live to please the crowd. You can be, become part of the crowd. You can, um, and I had this picture in my heart, or in my mind, uh, rather, um, just of, or, of that. You ever seen that fish that's swimming upstream? He's in the crowd, but he's not going with the flow like it's there's a difference and there's there's this video or, or maybe it was the start of a uh, of a of a person's like message huh the chosen yeah that's what it is so the chosen uh thank you so there's a that the chosen is about jesus right it's just like basically uh, uh um a movie or do, not a documentary like a movie like a kind of of the gospels it's a series okay it's a series you want to come up here <laughs> You want to tell me about this? Tell me all about it. Tell me what I don't know. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Exactly what she said. So it's that. It is a series. Uh, help me. It's a series. Anyway, it's about Jesus, and it's kind of like the Gospels in series. You can watch the Gospels on TV. It's called The Chosen. Anyway, and there's this, the start of the, the thing, it's uh, like this fish that's kind of going downstream with the rest of the fish, and then all of a sudden, it gets made new, it changes color, right, uh, and, and it begins to swim upstream, and what was interesting is, as it began to swim upstream, it kind of was bumping into other people, and then all of a sudden, they was coming upstream, and all of a sudden, it changed the flow. It changed the flow to that we're going to be with God, because guess what, there's more that are with God. Sometimes we have it the wrong way, that we're just fighting. No, let me tell you, there's more that are with God than, than, than are against us. Uh, you know what happens there? Boldness comes about when you understand who's with you. Remember Joshua chapter 1? He says, as I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. He says, be, verse 9, he tells us, be strong and of courageous, because I'll be with you. Look at it here. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. There's something that comes about when you understand who's with you at all times. But anyway, so we've been talking about the crowd. We've been talking about how it's really easy to blend in and be a part of the crowd. Be easy, uh, you know, to, again, what voices are we listening to in the crowd? Discerning God's voice among all the others, etc., etc. I'd encourage you seriously to go back and listen if you haven't been here for all of them. Because I really believe that where God sets you, He does feed you. Okay? And that what comes out of here is, is, is really a, a, what he's designed. That's, that's my heart's prayer, that I'm not just coming up with or just finding somebody else's greatest, latest, whatever. Uh, I, but really, Lord, what are you saying to this body in this season and this time? And so, but today I want to I uh, kind of wrap up a, a part two of last week's message, which is who's breathing on you? Who's breathing on you? Discerning the crowd, who's breathing on you? Really, and really to set up. Uh, the, the, what I'm going to be talking about for the next four weeks. So if you put up First John chapter 4, we're going to go ahead and read uh, 4, 1 through 4, and, and we're going to set, up, uh, set, set this up. It says, you dear children are from God and have, oh no, First John, First John 4, 1 through 4. Verse 4 is what I will highlight on today. But if you can uh, put up verse 1, we'll start with there. And he's talking about, talking about testing the spirits, Okay. He says, I know I'm sorry, I'm not trying to push you, I'm just short on time. So 1 John 4, 1, it says, dear friends, do not believe, do not believe every spirit. Or you could put it this way where it says believe. I think it's great to have a Bible you can write in because you can, uh, there's so many things that the Lord will speak to you or you can amplify your Bible, right, with, with, with the meanings that, that fully communicate to you. What the Holy Spirit speaks to you, 
right, that brings illumination. But he says, dear friends, do not believe or do not receive, do not receive every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. And that word spirit is translated, uh, you could, it's used so many times as spirit, breath, and wind, okay? That which gives animation to something is spirit, breath, and wind. And we, for, for simplicity's sake, and for what we're talking about today, we're just throw in that word, where you see that word spirit, put breath, okay? So he says this, he says, dear friends, do not believe every breath, every voice, because that's really what he's talking about here. He's talking about how there's a lot of spirits, there's a lot of voices, there's a lot of things speaking, or a lot of things, uh, in a sense, breathing that have, that have life. But don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe or don't receive everything you hear. He says, um, but test the spirits, or test the breath. <sighs> How many of you know, if you've been breathing on yourself for a while, you don't even know you got horse breath. Put on a mask, you'll know. <laughs> All right. Just kidding. All right. Uh, he goes on to say, but to see whether they are from God, because, but, but see, uh, test the spirits to see whether they're from God. And he goes on to say, um, because many false prophets... Um, have gone into the world. A false prophet would be one that is declaring a word as from God. A prophet is one, but the false prophet would be declaring a false word as from God. Amen. There's many words out there that we're taking. It's just the way it is. Because why? Why is it that way? Well, because you've received it. Because we, we haven't tested what we've been listening to. And so there's things that we believe and there's, there, there are convictions even that we have that are, that are not found in this. If you and I are going to walk and live and, and, and discern the crowds properly, it's going to start with us settling first and foremost, that the Word of God is final authority in our lives. And that when I look in here and I see something in here that says something different than how I have been operating or navigating my life, I am going to make the change. And, but I'm not going to make it on my own because when His Word is spoken, there is a grace to make that change. So it's not dependent upon me. It's just simply my agreement with him that allows the change to transpire or, or, or tra uh, uh, make, I don't know what the word I was looking for. Trans, I guess that could be right, transpire. Right. Maybe not. All right. Hey, let's keep going here. All right. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Here's what he's saying. Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus came and conquered is not from God. This is the, the, the anyone that says Jesus came and conquered is from God. Anyone that, in other words, who's king? He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Anyone that calls and says, well, what does the Lord say? Who's king? Who's the king? Who's the, who's, whose kingdom is it? Has Jesus come? Has he won? Is this the word? Anyone that says Jesus has come and conquered, that is a spirit or a breath from him. It's going to agree with this. But anyone that hasn't said that is of the spirit of antichrist. Okay? Let's keep on going here. So, uh, but every spirit that does not acknowledge is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and let me tell you, is even now already in the world. And now, verse 4, and this is where I really wanted to highlight on today. Yeah. This is so cool. But you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who's in the world. So what we're talking about is the spirit of God in you is greater than the spirit or of the antichrist who's in the world. Let's stick with this morning uh, for, for, for just for reception and, and, and to get across the point what I'm trying to make. The spirit, the breath. The words that God has spoken to you, the things that are in you, that he equips you with and, and, and positions you with to fight a battle. Listen, his words, his breath to you is greater than all the other voices around you. 
Uh, I just don't know if I should say anything. Because I just don't know. I just don't know if I should use my voice. This is what all this is about. It's about your voice. Here's the deal. We said this last time. Every word has an origin, but it also has an author. But it needs your words to illustrate it. Every, think of, think of this. How did, how did Genesis happen? There was a voice that went forth. There was a speaking and a declaring that brought into picture or into what we see. It was brought forth by a word. This is how now you're in this world. Guess, who's, guess who God left in this world? You and me. And so there's all these words that we're listening to in this world. He says there's a lot of different breaths. But he says, test them. Test the spirit. Test what you're listening to. Because if you don't test it, what can happen is, is you will give voice to the one that is authoring and with intention a story that's not God's plan. God's plan for you, God's plan for me takes me participating in. And I participate or walk in that plan or, or, or direct, by Bible says in uh, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 that he says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it, it, it this is again why we're saying test the spirits, test what you're letting in. Don't just let anything in because from out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks or, or according to Proverbs 4.23, it says out of the heart flows the pathways or the, the better way to say that if you were to take a picture is the river channels, not the water, but the actual course of your life. So we're going to guard and we're going to test this because what goes in will come out. And so at the end of the day, the enemy has to get it in you so it can come out of you so that he can illustrate his plan for you. Well, the same is true with the Lord. It's my partnership with him. The words of my mouth. How did you get born again? If you believe in your and you your words were required? Some words required. The assembly of our life, the, 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 the fight that we fight, the fight of faith, if we're going to win that fight, we're going to have to win the war of our words. And in order to win the war of our words, we have to recognize who we're fighting. There's a fly there. Shoot, fly, don't bother me. <laughs> don't you hate that sometimes? But like, okay, so here's the squirrel. Pass, uh, like people up here and the bug will be flying, you're like, you know, this keeps on. They don't even acknowledge it, you know. Anyway, it's like, and they're like fighting. It's like, just, just take some time and just, all right, here we go. All right, we're back at it. Anyway, praise the Lord. All right, so he says this. Uh, let's go back to 1 John 4, 4. It says, you, dear children, are, uh, are from God and have overcome. And that word overcome was victory. It's where, uh, uh, victory, you've overcome uh, because the one who is in you is greater. Let's just talk about that word greater, exceedingly or bigger. So if something's exceedingly or bigger, it's great. It's like what you're facing, it's like boom. It's like you just put God in there. He just, who's in you, who's with you is so much bigger. And yet there's this voice that says, don't let what you believe and what's in you out because of what other people might think. And what other people might say. You know, you don't want to be. What? There's a great fear. So it's, it's interesting in a crowd. Again, we're talking about discerning the crowds. The whole crowd goes with the one. That has the mic. He's given it to you. He's given you a greater voice. A greater voice than every voice that's around. A greater voice in you than the voices that are in this world. The breath in you is greater than the voice that's in this world. 
Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 50. I don't know if Jack and Dean Aikman are here this morning. Wave at me if you are. There they are. All right. Got to eat lunch last week with, uh, with them. And uh, he shared a verse with me, and it's been rocking my world. He said, this is what I say about myself. And I'm just like, Whew. and then uh, you read through the whole chapter. Here's what it says. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. This is King James. I think I had an NIV up there. It says this, the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue. You know what that means? You heard from him. You know what that means? You recognized, you tested, right, the spirit. Oh, and so you are well-trained. Well-trained means you passed the test. Well-trained doesn't mean just that you took the test and got a big F, but you te- took the test, you tested, you recognized what it was, you're well-trained, your tongue is well-trained, and guess what he's given you is to know the word that sustains the weary. He, he wakens me morning by morning. He wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. This is a, a, a declaration for us as a church and as the church that God has given you and me a well-instructed tongue. I carry a word that brings with it refreshment to the weary. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the way of the transgressor, this is in Proverbs, I think it's 16.4, it says that the way of the transgressor is hard. You know what a transgressor, sinner, violator of conscience, Violator of heart, transgress to transgress. He says that's hard. You ever been in a hard place? You ever run a hard race? In this world, there's all kinds of hard things. Go, you, know what, you, you know what's so wonderful when things are hard, when you're tired, when you're worn? You know what's, you know what's so wonderful? Something refreshing. Something refreshing. You know what that is? You know what it is that restored you? Hearing what God said about you. What brought peace? Hearing what God said. What brought brought just a calm to what you're fearing about with your child or your finances or whatever it might be? Hearing what God said said. Somebody had to say it. You had to catch it somewhere. Refreshing came from a well-trained tongue. Somebody's tongue. It could be yours. (laughs) What a declaration. What a declaration. The sovereign Lord, he's given me. Listen, to you today, at work, when you go out with your family, wherever it might be, He's given you a well-instructed, a well-trained tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. You know why he, he's even mindful about bringing that word? Because still he is and has always been about people. And you're one of them. And those, the Bible tells us, that those that refresh others, they themselves would be refreshed. God, refresh us in the crowd. Let us be the refreshment to the crowd. Let us begin to go into the crowd and hand out what would, in a sense, almost be like cups of cold water amongst the crowd. You ever have, see somebody walking through the crowd and they, it's all of a sudden, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, in a dry and weary land. I mean, this is what the Bible tells us, tribulation in this world, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world and the love of God that's in you was given to you to be poured out into others. You have a voice. Maybe I'll put it, like, put it like this. Might scare the pants off of you to say it like this. But what if I was to call you up and just say, hey, you have a word. You know, like all of a sudden, like we're not, we're not in like, ah, like worshiping Jesus moment, right? We're not like piano you know, everybody's dancing or everybody just like this holy hush is on the crowd. 
We're just like, you got a word? You need to give a word from God right now. Listen, wherever you go, he has a word. In the crowd, there's a word. And that word that's in you will change that which is around you because it's greater. But it takes a word. It takes your voice. It took a voice speaking into the darkness that was over the face of the deep to bring light. It still takes a word. It still takes you saying and using your words to declare something. I love what Pastor Evan taught on Wednesday night. Today's a good day to say, I trust God. How about that? I trust God. I trust God today. And today's a good day to declare the greatness of our God. Today's a good day to, to, to declare that you have a well-instructed tongue and you're bringing refreshing to the hearer. There's an invitation. Oh, and he goes on to say this. This is what I'd say for you to hang up uh, the, on your own time. If you keep on reading, he says, uh, I'm going to read this out of King James. It says, the Lord has opened my ear. I was not, oh, let me read it from yours. Um, the sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I haven't been able to hear. I don't hear God's voice. What did he say? He's opened my ears. I got ears to hear. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I, he, then I, this is what I love. He says, I offer my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those that would like to pull out my beard. In other words, I ain't scared. Hit me. Pull my beard out. I don't, I'm not hiding my face. I'm speaking a word with boldness, and I'm not dependent upon myself because what I'm talking to you about, I'm bringing the invitation. And my invitation to you is, is making a demand on God to move for you because of, cause, cause he loves you. And the, what I'm speaking from is not a place of judgment or a place of, but a place of love. And he says, I give you my beard. I do not hide my face from mocking and from spitting. Next verse. Because the sovereign Lord helps me. <laughs> because he that's in you. Isn't it something like Joshua 1, 9? He said, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be with you all the days of your life. You know how that he's in you? Guess where you go? If it's in you, guess who? It's with you. He's with you. His word's with you. His breath's with you. He gives you, you don't have to worry about what you say before you say it. He says, don't, don't worry about what to say before you have to come to say it because I'll give you the, the words to speak according to 2 Timothy 4, 17 and give you the words to minister so that through you, his message would be fully proclaimed. That's the scripture that's in my office. 2 Timothy 4, 17. The Lord stood next to me and gave me the words to speak or the words to minister so that through me, his breath, his message would be fully heard so that refreshing would come, so that freedom would come, so that light would come. It takes my voice. Amen. It takes your voice. It takes our voice. The crowd is fighting. The breath, the, all these spirit, they're fighting for your words. Don't give that which is around you rulership because greater is he that's in you than what you're facing in this world. The only way, the only way the enemy can have his way is if you let him. Use your voice. Don't be afraid. Why? Because the Lord, he helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me, he's near me. God, there's just a boldness about this, isn't there? He's vindicated me. He's near me. Who then is going to bring a charge against me? Let us face each other. Who's my accuser? Confront me. Let him confront me. I love this. There's a boldness. Keep on going all the way to the end. It, it is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moss will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. Here's, he's talking, he, he's bringing this message. 
light into the darkness, facing it without fear. It reminds me of Romans chapter 8. So what do we say to all these things? If God's for us, who can be against us? What do we say to all these things? We say, we say what he says. And we realize that I have a well-instructed tongue that brings refreshing to the transgressor whose way is hard. And they got to hear. They're waiting. They're begging to hear. And no one's telling them. Because what are they going to say? Pull my beard out. Spit on me. I'm bringing light. And I'm going to love you. I'm not turning my face away. And I'm going to use my voice to come into agreement, to bring an invitation. I'm going to close with this. And we're going to, why don't we just go ahead and stand? I want to close with this song, really. Which is a, a declaration of God reigning above it all. Um, really, I want him to reign over my life. I want him to reign over your life. I want him to reign, but it takes your words to make that declaration. But I want him to reign in Alma. I want this, I want because God has placed us here in this city for light to rule. For our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven, here in Alma, in my family, in my mind, in my relationships. Uh, let, 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 let that be the word. Let, let, let the word that's in me, the breath that's in me, the spirit of God that's in me be greater than the report or all that I see around me, all that's speaking. No, it's greater. It's exceedingly. It's got to come up. It's got to come out. It's got to come out by you. And I want to close with this. I just want to read the invitation. This is Isaiah 55. Just close your eyes. I think it's just powerful. Wait and listen, he says. Everyone who's thirsty, come to the waters and drink. You don't need any money. What I'm going to give you is priceless anyway. Just surrender. Why do you spend your money and your time for what does not satisfy? No, come and listen to me. Incline. Come under, sit down with your ears and hear what I have to say and your soul shall live. I want to make with you an everlasting covenant filled with mercy. Behold, I have given him, David, a witness to the people, a leader and a commander. Seek me while I may be found. Hear what I have to say and don't forsake it. For my ways or my thoughts, they're higher than yours. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so too are my ways, my thoughts, and my words towards you. And my words that come out of my mouth, they don't return to me void. But this is how it works. Just as when the water comes down from heaven, it waters the earth before it returns again. So too does my word, when it comes forth out of my mouth, what I'm telling to you, what I'm releasing to you, it's the word of my spirit. And it works. And that's what brings refreshing. Father, we lift our hands to you and we thank you that your word is working today. Your word is working. You might just say that with your own mouth. Your word is working in me today. Your word is working in my family today. Your word is working in this nation today. Your word is working. We declare Jesus is Lord. I declare Jesus is Lord today. We declare Jesus is Lord over this nation. Jesus is Lord over this church. Jesus is Lord over our bodies, over our health, over our finances. Jesus is Lord over minds. Jesus is Lord. 
We declare Jesus. And Father, we thank you for your word. We sit with you. And we tell you, you reign. We put you in that high place today. You're so good. You're so good. Close with this song. If you need prayer, healing in your body, or whatever it might be, I don't just agreement. We're gonna be up here. Uh, Pastor Evan, myself, and the team of prayers. If you just during this song, but let's just close out with giving God praise. Put Him in the high place today. Thank you.